Alright, what's going on? Coach Luca here from Vigor Ramp Fitness Performance and today we're going to go over kind of coaching for the back squat. Actually, matter of fact, what we're going to do is we're going to do more than coaching for the back squat. We're going to just go over squatting coaching because I feel like this is so important, okay? Um, you've heard me mention this before that we just don't back squat a lot of people and not because uh, we don't feel the back squat is a great exercise, it's because a lot of people cannot get into good positions for the back squat. Like they don't have the adequate, I would say, especially upper back mobility. So they, they cannot extend in their upper back. Their shoulder mobility doesn't go here. And you'll see, once I set this up, why you need this so bad, right? And because they can't get there, to try to back squat will put them into really bad position from the get-go. So, you know, here's the thing. What, what, is, what are squats great for? Well, they're fantastic for building muscle, right? So if you want to build, I would say, more toned legs, bigger legs, Right, more lean sculpted legs. Yeah, I said those words because it's like they help out with that. Because that all, all toning and sculpting is is like, hey, have more lean mass, have less body fat. Right? They're great for that. They're great for strength. Okay, they're fantastic. They're great for fat loss. And and why? Because well, first of all, it's your whole body working. Right, a lot of muscle mass is involved. Um, it's so it's it's very very tough. And especially if you start doing any type of, I would say, well, we already know, like, you know, improving mu lean muscle mass and reducing calories to draw body fat. That's the, that's the name of the game. But also, man, like when you start doing any type of like higher rep squats, it's very, very challenging. So they're just, they're, they're fantastic. But you know, people go like, well, you say that squats are great, Luca, but you just don't use back squats. So I wanted to show one different variations that we use and kind of regress and show on the back squat how we, how we do stuff and how we, how we build it up and what are things that we'll, we'll switch up into it. So from exercises to cues to things, to weak links to work on, we're gonna go over all of that today. Right? But we're going to start with the back squat because it's like if you can do it, how do you want to set it up? And first of all, like he was going to shoot me doing this in the rack, but sometimes I might just step out towards you and show it to you. Not to say that if you were doing this in real life that you do that, but I do want, I want you to see what's going on. So that's why I have an unweighted uh, barbell to be able to change angles and to show you guys, you know, what, what the coaching cues are. So first of all, where, what we're going to start with if we are setting up a back squat, remember, if we're setting up a back squat, okay, is that we want this to be about chest height. And you'll see, the, you'll see a mistake right off the bat is some people will set this up too high, so then you have to get up on your toes to, to essentially to unrack it, right, and get back down, or too low where you have to now kind of good morning it, you know, good morning out of it. So one of the things with any uh, especially back squats is like, you know, positional. So if the setup is good, the rep will probably be good or it has a, a lot better chance of being good. If the setup is crappy, you're not going to do a good rep, okay? So as I set up, a uh, couple of things, okay? I'm going to get under, like I like to have this, this uh, if you look at the smooth knurling on a bar, right? I want to keep my thumb here and that's going to be my setup, right? So if I extend my thumb and it hit, hit, and hits the smooth part, that's around where I want to grab it. Now, the thing is that you can, the closer that you can get on your squat, the tighter and, and more packed your upper back is going to be. So on a back squat, the closer that you can keep the bar, the better. Most people just do not have that shoulder mobility to get in here. So this is usually a good start. And if people can't do that, then we'll adjust that. Okay. So as I get underneath the bar, okay, you'll notice I'm going to set it up on my traps. So essentially, I'm gonna bundle up. Notice, I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blades together and then pack my shoulders down and get my chest up, okay? From here, I'm gonna take a big breath into my belly and step up, okay? I'm gonna push. So here, I'm thinking about pushing into the bar before I even lift it. Remember, there's no weight on here, but there'd be weight on here. So I'm pushing into the bar to kind of get a sense of the bar. It's gonna make it feel a little bit lighter. I'm gonna pack my chin, and I'm gonna step up. And usually what we wanna do is one, two, three. So step back, step back, and align, right? That's ideal. It's three steps. Now, when you look at me from the side, a couple of things, okay? I'm about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider. My feet are going to be about 5 to 12 degrees. And I'm going to, t once I put the bar down, I'm actually going to talk about foot positioning and stance and all these different things, okay? Now, what you will see in a big mistake, so my elbows are underneath, right? So watch. My elbows are underneath the bar. 
I'm squeezing my shoulder blades. I'm pulling the bar down into my traps. And one thing that people don't talk about is I'm actually flexing the front of my shoulder too. So I want that 360 stability, okay? From here, I'm feeling like very, very tight right now, meaning like stable, okay? You will see extended necks, meaning you'll see a lot of this happening. Okay, this over overreacts, put it, put, it, put it this way, your lower back now fires, it takes your rib cage out of position, and it takes your glutes and hamstrings out. So I am going to keep a long neutral spine, meaning I'm gonna pack my chin to have a better spinal position. Okay, from here, notice my knees are a little soft. We used to coach this, you know, locking out the knees and squeezing your butt, but now we keep the knees soft at the beginning, and because we keep them soft, our core is gonna come under and be nice and tight. Now, so I'm just gonna do a rep or two here, okay? So I'm gonna pull myself down. Notice I push my knees apart. Keep that upper back pack, chin pack, push through. So I'm feeling every part of my foot. Don't think push through heels, think tripod foot. So I feel my heel, middle of my foot, big toe, little toe. And I push the ground away, okay? And then I would come back and put it back in place, okay? So let's just go over what happened right there, what's going on and what we're looking for, okay? So first of all, you know, I, I talked about how when you set up, right, you want to be in good positions and I want to be nice and solid because if I come under rack, and you'll see this a lot, right? People come here, they're not really paying much attention to the setup, they lift and then they go out right here and then now they're trying to shift their hips and get tall and, and, and the thing is that's very, very difficult to do, especially once you have load on the bar. But if you get a great setup before you start, now all of a sudden, guess what? It's kind of like jujitsu, right? Position before submission, right? If you have a great position, you'll be able to submit. If you have a sloppy uh, position, it's gonna be hard to submit. People can swivel out of it, right? Just because I love martial arts, so I wanted to, to break that down there for you. Now watch, okay? Years and years and years ago, you know, we would teach a more hip dominant squat. We'd say, hey, push your hips back as far as you can. Um, and, but the thing is like, we want to start with a squat for our clients that's a healthier squat. The healthier squat I'm talking about is where things work together. What I mean by this is that we actually start with knees soft, okay, instead of locked out. And here's why most people right now, we live in a society where there's a lot of this and we're actually very extended in our low backs. So this is the posture I'm talking about, right? So anterior pelvic tilt, leaning back, heads forward. And what that does is, so if you, most of our clients that walk in, uh, if, if you say, hey, I need you to lock those knees out, right? They'll actually be extended. You can see me from the side, I'm leaning back. I'm not nice and tall with my rib cage down, right? With a tall spine. And so one of the ways to do this is to coach and cue soft knees at the top. And when you do that, watch what happens. I'm gonna bend my knees a little bit and my core is gonna come underneath. So now I have, I'm, I'm out of this extended posture and into this nice neutral spine, okay? Uh, now if somebody says, hey listen, you know, we're trying to get the best powerlifting numbers of all time and you're doing your one rep maxes and stuff, you know, is this the best way to go? There's some other coaching cues we'll touch on that can help you with that. But this is a healthy spine and most people, like I said, you gotta, even with our athletes that come in and are a lot, they're a lot more hip dominant, when we teach them this squat and you know the, the quads are working and the glutes are working a ton of, and the hamstrings are firing, it actually helps them improve all their lifts and they stay healthier and safer, which is really important. So this is why we teach this first. This is our first approach to, to teaching the squat. And so here my knees are nice and soft, okay? My core's under and watch, my ankles, so I'm gonna get some ankle uh, uh, sit dorsiflexion, I'm gonna get some hip extension and knee flexion all at the same time, right? You can see how smooth that looks like too. It's nice and smooth, and that's what we want. We want a smooth squat. We're basically tr trying to create a nice squat pattern where everything fires at the same time, okay? You can see it's smooth. Essentially what we do is we open up the hips to create, we should say open up the knees 
to create space for the hips to drop down. Okay, and you can see that's smooth. Now obviously, that's something I've been working on a lot in mobility and, and also the squat pattern, but that's where we want our clients to get to. And what we'll end up doing, of course, as we're doing an assessment, we're seeing, hey, is somebody really, you know, doesn't have a lot of thoracic extension? Then we're gonna work on those drills. Does somebody have very little dorsiflexion in their ankle so they can't get their knee past their toe? And if that's the case, we're gonna adjust things, right? Remember, we're talking now about this optimal healthy squat and at what point in time you can do this and how to coach it. Now, I'm gonna go back to this bar and not every time I'm not gonna set up super detailed because I'm gonna show you guys some stuff, okay? So, as I come under here, right, and I create this shelf, okay? Now, what you're gonna see a lot of at the squat is this, right, because there's no shoulder mobility. Watch where my elbows are going, okay? My elbows are flying back. And when your elbows fly back, it's gonna be very hard for you to have a neutral neck, okay? Notice, your head's gonna fly forward. So now when we squat this way, the, 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 the load is gonna, so as I come down, it's really easy for that load to take you forward, right? And maybe good morning it a little bit more, okay? And this is the reason why if a person cannot get into a good position, okay? Elbows under, squeeze the shoulder, black, or shoulder blades together, chest is open, but rib cage is down with softness, okay? If we can't get this position, Okay, then we probably will start adjusting to a different bar, which I'll show you guys in a second. You will also see this happen, right? Where you get further out on the bar, okay? Is this right or wrong? I mean, this can allow you to have a better upper back position, but once again, now you can't create, I would say that torque, and you can't get the tension in the upper back. I have so much less tension in the upper back right now because my arms are not here and nice and tight. Right, this feels way solid. And if I can get even closer, now I can get even tighter. And even this even feels better. Like being able to be here, my upper back is so tight, I'm pu pulling the bar into my trap. I'm taking a big breath of air. Man, I feel so much more stable than if I come out here, it's very difficult for me to create upper back tension, okay? Now, it may allow me to have a better upright posture Right? I can keep my chest up because if I have tight shoulders and no thoracic extension, now I'm going to be here. Okay? So, think of it this way, that we look for what a person can sit up for. Okay? So, first of all, if we can't get these good positions here, then this might not be the best option. Okay? Now, you might be saying, well, if you can get into these positions, what are some other options to squat? Well, first of all, the closer that we can be, this is, somewhat, this is somewhat of a general rule, but if I have a closer stance, now, and a lot of this will depend on anatomy. If I have a closer stance, I can usually be more of an Olympic squat. I can stay more upright, right? Which may be able to give me some more quads. If I go a wider stance, so, you have very close stances. Some people will never be able to get there because of their anatomy, which is fine. You have like a neutral stance, and then you have wider stances. Now with the wider stance, the wider you go for your toes to track the knees, you'll have to also push those hips back. Now see, this is more hip dominant. This is more of a hip dominant squat, and I'm feeling more loose on this position, okay? Now depending on what the goal is, or what you, the, uh, I would say the uh, capability of your anatomy goes, that might be a, an option. So there is no wrong or right here, okay? There's no wrong or right, it just depends on your anatomy, what your goals are, what's safe and healthy, what is it that you want to develop, okay? One thing I didn't show you on here, which I'm gonna show you in a second in the other bars, is being able to do a box squat. So a box squat, especially if somebody has a knee pain, right, and they have banged up knees, and that whole knee up, pushing the knees forward, hurts their knees. And first of all, the knees falling over the knees, I'm sorry, the, the, the knees falling over the toe is not unhealthy at all, okay? But some people will have issues. In that case, we might go to a box squat, in which case, you're gonna sit, you're gonna go a little bit wider and sit those hips back 
and sit down on the box. Notice how my shin is almost vertical or vertical here, right? And then pause and then drive out of that. Okay, we'll, we'll show that show that in a second. So now you can see some of the things that we're talking about on that squat position, okay? Setup is important. Che the, the, the bar is chest height. We get underneath it, right? We have a great setup. Elbows under, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Chest is nice and open. We crush the bar down into our traps. I feel tension in the back, but also we coach get tension in the front. We want that 360 stability, okay? When we step out, one, two, three, take a, make, making sure that our rib cage is not flared, scan. Take a big breath of air, 360 into the belly, pack the chin, and from there we're gonna go soft knees, rip the knees apart, sit down in between the hips, stay as upright as we can, feel our foot, meaning every part of our foot, we feel it, and then we push the ground away, okay? How low should you go? It depends. It depends on your mobility. It depends on your anatomy. Some people should never go. While I can go neutral spine, pretty much ass to grass, some people might be only able to get to here because of their hip anatomy or, or mobility restriction. So the general rule is this. Don't go lower than what feels right or feels good or if you start having any nagging injuries, pain, or anything that doesn't feel right, we don't go that low, okay? Now, I'm gonna take you guys to the second bar. This is a duffel bar from Kabuki Strength. Uh, and like I said, we, we don't get anything to promote or anything like that. Uh, it's a phenomenal bar for a number of different things. But here's, here's why I'm going to show you this. Because we're kind of starting at like, hey, if you can do back squats and this is how you should do them. Two, if, uh, you know, what's a variation that maybe you can't do a straight bar, this will, be, will allow you to do it. And because there's a bend to where now I can get a different angle. So if I had to be higher... Maybe I don't have that shoulder mobility. So I'm going to do that same setup here, and I'm going to turn towards you guys so you can see the difference. Same thing going on the shelf. Elbows under, chest up, ribcage down. Pack that chin. Push. One, two, three. All right. Now, notice, once I turn towards you now, okay, this is a better position for my shoulders. So we'll have some people that can't do a straight bar, but here they'll feel fine because now they can get their elbows lower. I can still pack, like watch, I can still squeeze my shoulder blades. I can still bring my, my elbows in. This feels, even for me, this feels a lot better, okay? And from here, same coaching cues, same things that we're talking about, right? But now, it, this just, it just feels better, right? And if a person can find their good positions with a different bar, it's gonna make a huge difference. So I can still have that shelf in the front, still have that shelf in the back, Right, can stay nice and upright, keep that neutral spine. So, once again, I cannot reinforce the importance of that neutral neck position. We talk about neutral spine, but most people in a squat, as soon as the bar comes on their back, they're here, okay? And they walk out and it's bad position. So we want that, imagine if there was a, a dowel, a PVC pipe on the back, it should be butt, upper back, and the neck, which means it has to be nice and long, okay? And then we look up, right? And then stay in that neutral position. Once again, just the neck being out of place will change every joint going down the spine. So that's important, okay? So this is, would be something that we would use for back squats, for front squats as well. I'll show you guys that as we come back here. And then number three is a safety squat bar. Now, this is great for overhead athletes, for people with shoulder issues, and like I've said this before, seven to eight out of 10 people that come to um, you know, our gym, I would say most gyms cannot pass overhead flexion test, they, can't, you know, they don't have great thoracic extension and rotation, and they just won't fit into either of the bars that I just showed you. So how can we get into back squat safely uh, if the issue is more an upper body issue? And the safety squat, squat bar is a fantastic one. Uh, this is an Elite FTS one. I'm, same thing, I highly recommend any of the Kabuki Strength products. They're phenomenal. Uh, a little higher in price range, but worth every penny. So notice, same thing. I'm, I'm right about uh, a chest height here for my setup. And you can see, right, that this, the, the safety squat bar has handles in front. So that we don't have to reach back here. We can reach in front for this. 
Now I'm gonna give you guys like right off the bat a couple of things that because of this bar, it changes. It changes a little bit of the center of gravity and because the arm, the arm lever is in front of us, it's harder to create that upper back tension, okay? So you have to be more conscious of it when you set up, right? Whereas with the bar, you already, you, as soon as you get your hand close and squeeze your shoulder blades together and pull your elbows down, and like I said, I always say, pull the bar down into, into your, uh, say into your lats, right? Into your traps if it's, uh, if it's on a shelf. Now you have this massive and strong foundation. Here, it becomes a little bit more difficult to do that, okay? Because the arms are out here, so now it's tougher, and once again, you're gonna keep your arms up, which is great because it's not beating up the shoulders. So I'm gonna set this up and just show you guys how this looks like. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm setting it up, nice and tall. One, two, three. So I always wanted to show you kind of like that step, that step out. Now, as I go towards, I'm going to kind of give a side angle so you guys can see me. Notice, right? I'm holding here so my, my shoulder mobility is not a problem now, okay? And as long, even if people that have pain above, above that 90 degree angle here now can actually safely do this, right? You can see how long the arm is. Some people will grab it up higher here. Uh, we can actually unscrew these and it's like a short. I actually prefer this because you can kind of create drive those elbows down and still get some tension. The further right I go, the harder it is for me to create tension in the back. So if I'm closer, I can still rip those elbows down, open up my chest. And what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna tell you guys one, one of the cues, because of this position, when I set up, I gotta make sure my chest is nice and tall. My rib cage is still down and my, my abs are solid, but I gotta make sure the chest is tall. Because for people to have postures that are kind of rounded, it's gonna take them here. See how it collapsed? So I gotta stay nice and tall. I'm gonna crush these handles, get my elbows down and packed. Same thing, neutral chin. And you can see no issues with my shoulders. Right, this feels great for most people. And as the weight gets heavier, obviously, you know, we have to make, uh, I would say sometimes adjustments with the arms coming out up a little bit, okay? But, this solves, I would say, the upper body restrictions for a back squat, okay? Now, you might be like, well, I don't have a safety squat bar. Get a safety squat bar, damn it. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, like, these are, these are the tools that really help your clients to be able to do certain exercises, okay? Now, from here, what we're going to do, I'm going to literally come back up. Here's why, okay? Because think of it of, about... Uh, these back squats that we just did, straight bar, kabuki bar, duffalo bar, and then the safety squat bar, right? Each one gives us a little more leeway on that upper back, but we lose something with it. But meaning, lose something with it. Like look, that whole upper back tension that we talked about, that's very beneficial. But if you wanna improve leg strength, either one of these is great, right? Unless you're a power lifter and you really have to, um, I would say, you know, do the barbell back squat, but even then, you know, I talked to Mike Robertson, I remember when he had a wrist injury and, you know, he couldn't squat because he had a wrist injury with a, with a, with a uh, I'll say straight bar, but he was doing a safety squat bar and still being able to get progress and improve his leg strength and so on, right? So now from here, I'm going to slide back. He was going to slide back with me real quick. I'm going to go to back to the duffalo bar and I'm going to kind of finish it uh, with the bars at least because the straight bar is very, very similar, but I love the duffalo bar even for front squats because it's because it's uh, it's an easier setup on the shoulders. Like I said, again, limitations on a front squat. Even though we love it, we love the front squat. So a couple of limitations on a front squat is if number one, if people don't have a lot of ankle dorsiflexion and they want to push their hips back too far, it's a lot tougher because the bar is going to want to roll down. It's a self-limiting exercise. I love the, the the duffalo bar because look at this smoothness. So. And the main thing is I want to make sure that the line is right in the middle of my chest, okay? And for me, I have, I'm pretty good with, with this crossed over, I would say, setup, right? Uh, some people would go with the Olympic lift setup. I, I can do that, but this is a lot better, a, a lot smoother for me. But the thing is, my stance is going to be the same. I'm actually going to turn towards you guys a little bit. My stance is going to be the same, okay? Now, remember... What's with the downside to the front squat is 
I can't pack my lats. It actually takes my lats out of it. But I can stay a lot more upright. I can stay a lot more upright. Okay? And you can see how much more vertical I can be in this than I would be in a back squat where the bar is on my back. All right? Same thing. Healthy squat. Soft knees. Packed under. Okay? And so this is where we would go also for somebody. But if they have a restriction with ankle dorsiflexion, then maybe this might not be an option as well. So notice how we're, we're going through these different options based on the person, what their goals are, but then what, what they can do, okay? From there, uh, you know, we, we talked about, now, now remember, coaching cues. Obviously, we're not, we're not using those same coaching cues on a front squat because there is no lats to pack and squeeze together. The main thing here is because you're gonna stay upright, the bottom part is the same. I wanna feel my whole foot, okay? My hips are gonna be in a position that's gonna be kinda aligned with my anatomy, so whether that's toes more forward, whether they're a little bit more out, right? The key thing is that you can draw a straight line from one to the other. So if you don't do a good setup, you'll see sometimes people put one foot in front or behind the other, that's not good, because now when you're going down, your hips are gonna be all out of whack. Now one thing, you might see sometimes is that one foot is turned out a little more than the other. Now that might just be an anatomy thing, right? Maybe one of their feet is like, a, or should I say, femurs is a little more retroverted, right? Turned out than the other, and that's okay. Like we got a, I got a friend and a client who I am not exaggerating when I say his left foot is th this far out, his right foot is this far out. And you can see that crazy difference. And, and mo most people will go like, hey, you're completely set up wrong, but this is his anatomy. So when he squats like this, that feels great. If he brings this foot in, just like the other one, as he goes down, he's gonna feel a pinch in his hip because he gets femoral acetabular impingement because his, his hip is a little retroverted, a little more retroverted on this side, so turned out a little bit more. All right, so when we work with clients, we find the stance that feels the best for them that kind of aligns with their anatomy, okay? So with the front squat, the biggest thing I'll say, apart from like having that stacked core, big breath into the belly, that natural belt, packed chin, is whether you're in an Olympic position or you're here, the lower you go, the more you have to drive those elbows up because they're gonna come down and if they come down, you're gonna collapse that upper back. So we wanna, the lower I am, the more I'm gonna drive those, el uh, those elbows up in the air, keep that pack, the neck neutral, push the ground away. I right? push myself away from the ground. So that's gonna keep me upright, okay? Now, obviously, for all these things that we're talking about, we need core stability, we need hip mobility, we need ankle mobility, right? And we need thoracic extension mobility as well. And obviously, the more mobile our shoulders are, the better too. So we're not, you know, those are things that we talked about in, I would say, different, uh, different, other different videos specifically addressing that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run and get two kettlebells, they're gonna be lighter, and, uh, I'm just show you guys like what are the things that we work on the most. We talked about the goblet squat position because um, plate squats, goblet squats, you know, how do we even train to get to these places? And you know, the goblet squat is what we teach in our orientation. If you guys haven't watched the orientation video, you'll see how I break this stuff down. But because from here, what I can do is this is our goblet position, right? It keeps the weight in front of me, keeps the core engaged. And the thing that I love about this is it gives you a natural cue to us that when we, we still keep those soft knees and as people are going down, we say, hey, get those elbows on the insides of the knees, right? So you can kind of see, I'm brushing the insides of the knee. So you get this kind of like hip mobility, yeah. right? And you're able to pry the hips open even like, and we'll, it, we'll, we'll teach this pushing the knees open. And it's a great cue because for most people, if they back squat or front squat, on the way up, here's what happens. Like, knees collapse in and you come out. But if your elbows are on the insides of the knees, guess yeah. what? It's a tactile cue, right? Tactile meaning I feel it, right? I can't push my knees in. I actually have to keep them out. So it's a cue to keep pushing those knees out. Feel your whole foot but push your knees out. And so the goblet squat is a great way to, to coach this pattern, this healthy pattern that we talked about, okay? And from there, it will be a double kettlebell squat. Because remember, every, all the limitations that we have from, I would say from the bars, with, with the kettlebells, what we can do is we can keep 
them out here, right? Neutral, first of all, I have neutral grip. I can rip my chest apart. I can still keep this cue of elbows on the insides of the knees. I can stay upright. I can feel my whole foot. I can pry my hips open, and drive up. Keep that neck pack. Great for also training the strength of the upper back as well as stacking the core. Okay, so you can kind of see we actually went reverse on this and doing the coaching cues. A lot of the lower body, I would say, um, coaching is very, very similar. Now, of course, every person is different. So if we take, uh, you know, let's take two of our clients. Guys, Hugh, very short, short femur, right? His squat can be a lot more upright. And then we have uh, like a JJ Phillips who's 6'11", really long femurs, and he's improved significantly, but he will never have a back squat where he's this upright, right? He's more here. Right, even with a lot of work on, on ankle dorsiflexion, hip mobility, he's like, this is his back squat, okay? And that's just anthropometry. So b basically meaning how people's anatomy and joint lengths are. And so you, you have to look for, you know, this is where the individual, individual wow, I have a really tough time with that one today. Individualization comes in when as far as like looking at somebody and going like, hmm, okay, maybe they do need to push their hips back a little bit more because they're going super far forward and kind of almost getting off their heel, right? They're getting off their heel, and so we'll give them a box behind and say, hey, I need you to push your butt back, right? Butt back a little bit, touch that box, and we'll put the box right in a place where it gives them a good squat. So once again, right, there's so much to, you want to look at the individual, but hopefully some of these coaching cues and just adjustments show you, you know, when, when the back squat is a great option. Um, like I said, we, you know, some, uh, uh, we, we could go into depth as far as like torquing the floor. You know, there's strategies that we haven't talked about. And what I mean by that is imagine that you're standing on some toilet paper and you're trying to rip that toilet paper apart. Obviously, your feet are not going to move because I'm trying to literally dial out the floor, right? I'm torquing the floor. Now, if you do that, you're going to feel your glutes turn on, right? You're going to get more of that knee out thought process. So same thing on the way up, torque that floor, okay? But I will say a lot of times that's not something that we even wanna coach from the get-go because if you do that, people will arch. And when they're already excessively arched, it's not gonna be the best thing for them. Now, what that doesn't mean is like, so if you're watching this video, you might say, hey, here's all these other coaching cues that you didn't mention. And it's like, absolutely, because we start with the healthiest spot. Like that's the thing that we wanna coach first. And then things like I said, box squats, and how do we do box squats? Controlling down, vertical shin, pause, no rock back, stay solid, right? There's all these different, I would say, methods based on what the person needs and first of what they want, what is their goal, but then what do they need based on what's going on with them? What are their weak links, right? Because once we do these squats, hey, if you're, if you're going down into a squat with a bar and you start leaning forward, Okay, what do we need to do? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna use pause squats to fix that problem. We're gonna use double kettlebell squats to fix that problem. We might even do some good mornings to be able to make sure that you, you know, if you do get into those positions, you're strong enough to get out of them, right? There's a lot of different things that we're gonna use to create, the, like fix the weak links and bring you up to where you wanna be and get your goal. So I was gonna make this kind of short, but I think that we went a little longer. But that's, that's always the case. I hope this gives a lot of insight on some of the methodologies of, and principles of how we, we squat, what we do, and uh, how you fit into that. But like, once again, hey look, if, if you're in general wanna get put on muscle, you know, get stronger, but be healthy, be safe, not have issues, and you're not in it for like, to, to win a powerlifting contest or anything, or even if you wanna improve your like, let's say athlete performance, just know you don't have to back squat, right? You do have to squat. Squatting is a very smart thing to do and it's gonna be very helpful, but there's a lot of different options that fit you so you can improve performance, feel better, move better, and not be hurt. All right, so with that, Coach Luke is out. I'll see you in the next one, and uh, just make sure you put it into play.